War. War never changes. Or does it? Hoi, today we're breaking down New World's War mode. This is a 50v50 mode and I think it has some very interesting aspects to it, but some things that also need improvement. I personally was part of four different wars, so I'd like to think I have a decent amount of experience to share right now. The three things that I want to focus on in this video are the mechanics of war, some examples from the wars to show how they actually play and feel, and then how I personally feel about them. If you enjoy this type of content and you want to support me doing it, feel free to click the subscribe button and maybe the bell. Okay, so how do you even get into a war? In short, a company or clan from one faction needs to declare war on a territory currently owned by another faction or another company from another faction. There are a bunch of preconditions that we're not going to get into, but eventually there is a company that gets decided to be the one that leads the war. Then you can sign up for the war and you don't have to belong to the company declaring the war and you don't even have to belong to the faction declaring the war. So for example, if the purple faction is getting attacked by the green faction, then people from the yellow faction can decide to either assist with the defense or with the offense. Now here's the thing, the people leading the companies choose who gets into the war. Meaning, if you're random with no connections to the companies at all, your chances are relatively slim unless they're short on people anyways. Most companies typically give people of their own company preferential treatment because they know them and they can communicate with them easier. So if you want to be part of wars, it's usually a good idea to either be in one of those companies or be friends with them or be the one declaring the war. The wars happen at scheduled times, which are preset by the defending company. So you can figure out what time you'll have to be online and then 15 minutes prior to the start of the war, you'll get an invite to the battlefield so you have sufficient time to prepare or go through the tactics or just enough room to make it in time. If you're part of the defending faction, this is also where you can set up any cannons or turrets or anything else you want to use for the defense of your fort. Both the attacking and defending faction can use their armories at this point as well. The armories allow you to buy additional resources and tools of various kinds that you can use in battle. You start the game with 50 battle tokens, so you can buy some stuff right from the start. You can see an overview here, this is from the offending side, not everything here is available if you're on the defending side. We'll get back to these resources later on. For now, just know that two that are frequently bought at the start of the game by most players, especially by newer players, are the Haste Elixir as well as the Healing Elixir. Healing Elixir does exactly what the name says. And the Haste Elixir gives you drastically increased movement speed for a very long time, which allows you to charge into battle very quickly early on, which is quite important. Why is that important? Because once the gates open, the first thing that'll happen is that you have to reach three capture points. And if you're the defending team, you have to make sure that the enemy team doesn't claim them, you have claimed them by default. And if you're the attacking team, then you have to make sure to claim these points. In order to do that, you have to stand on the point for long enough with more people than the enemy team. This can take quite a while, it's not easy to capture these points at all. I have seen battles that ended with just one point being captured throughout the entire duration. And this is where you very quickly realize that let's just run it down mid is probably not the best option unless your team is heavily outgearing and outleveling the enemy team. Because that was the strategy the company in our very first war was trying to run and it didn't go all too well. Now there are multiple reasons for that and the first one is a big issue that Amazon definitely needs to tackle. What would frequently happen in these wars is that players would freeze up. You would basically see everyone frozen in place. And this was an issue that specifically happened a lot in wars. And that happened more if you clustered on one point. It's safe to assume that New World's devs will tackle this issue before launch to make this mode more playable. But even then, I think running onto a single point will probably not be a preferable strategy by most. Because what happens is AoE damage becomes incredibly easy to apply to everyone grouped on the point. And that not only extends to abilities, but also the cannons installed on the fort. Many of these do huge AoE damage on a short cooldown, and when you can just blast them onto a single point and that's where everyone is standing, then good luck surviving to the enemy team. I have a wonderful clip from an enemy to demonstrate that as well. In my second war that I participated in with Varangian Guard, we were attacking a point with a splinter group trying to take that point and we almost had it. And as you can see here from the enemy's perspective, the point is almost red, meaning if it was fully red, we would have captured it. They did a last second defense with the cannon and you can see how that turned out here. 
1600 to 2000 damage is way more than you can normally deal with abilities or ranged weapons or anything. And it's consistent, you just constantly drop these bombs. So as long as enemies stay clustered, this is an insane amount of damage which can very quickly clear a point and turn it around as you saw here. So really the first thing you have to do in war is learn to respect and counter the cannons. So what can you do about them? Well, the first thing you can do is use your own ranged weaponry in order to attack them. And there are some interesting perks, like for example there are weapons with additional siege damage, which take out structures quicker. It's especially nice to have those on a rifle, which is generally meant for long range combat due to the hit scan mechanics on it. Or you can deploy your own turrets. Remember the screen that I showed you earlier, where you can buy things? That stays active for the entire game, and you generate battle tokens throughout the game, for example, for getting kills. And with those tokens, as the attacking faction, you can build all kinds of things. You can, for example, build a fire launcher platform, a cannon platform, or a repeater platform. All just different variations of cannons, essentially, that have different types of damage and different AoE and so on. But here's the problem. Just putting them down is not enough to use them, and they can still get destroyed as well. What you also need are ammunition kits, which are an additional 30 battle tokens. So if you want to use any of these at the beginning of a war, you have to, on one hand, have people buying them, and on the other hand, have people buying ammunition kits for them. And then you'll also have to defend them. But these help you take out enemy siege much quicker as well, because, again, they do big damage and that doesn't matter on which side you're on, it happens on both sides. Also, the cannon is especially scary in that regard, and I think this might need a nerf, because it has a knockback effect as well. So if an enemy is on a cannon or a repeater or whatever, and you shoot them with your cannon, then they get knocked off that cannon, and that can happen very quickly, so they basically almost have no chance to even shoot back if you just lock them in a constant knockback loop with your cannon shots. This happened to me in the last war, and while there are certain conditions for that to be fulfilled in the first place, like no one going for the cannon in melee range and you having the ammunition for it as well, I think it still needs some nerfs from its current form because it's very very hard to counter once it's set up. If one of the cannon platforms that the attacking team places gets destroyed, it doesn't come back. You can buy new ones with battle tokens. The defending team, on the other hand, can't buy these, but they are built from the start of the game. However, theirs, in return, can be repaired. In order to do that, you have to walk down to the repair station and pick up repair parts. You can bring those up to the cannons and then use them to repair them, much like you can use them to repair your gates as well. So if you're defending the fort, you essentially want to have someone on repairing duty in order to make sure that your cannons stay alive. From what I've seen so far, this can be the more important part of the battle compared to the actual fight on the ground, because the cannons have such a massive impact, or the fight on the ground can often revolve around these cannons as well. But that's not all you can buy. You can, for example, also buy inferno traps that you place on the ground in order to deal damage to enemies that come too close, which can be very useful if you're trying to contest a point. You can buy powder kegs, which assist with taking down doors. And last but not least, you can also buy things like mana elixirs, arrows, or cleansing elixirs, which help with the normal combat. Though some of these I wouldn't necessarily recommend buying, because often you're better off just using whatever you can craft yourself, so you can use your battle tokens for other more important things. Then again, the Azoth projectiles are the highest tier in the game, and otherwise relatively hard to craft if you're early in the game, so it can still make sense to get those at some points. Now obviously there are a variety of different tactics to defend points or capture points. I won't go into that in detail because really there are no established strategies and everyone will use their own and find their own and see what works for them and makes sense. But if you actually make it past the three points that you need to capture, then the next step is to take down one of the gates. The fort that we were defending that actually got to that point had five gates. I think some may also have four gates, I'm not sure. But either way, you only need to take down one. Because then you need to get to the center point within the fort and capture that. And chances are, if you made it this far, you probably will be able to do that by just having one gate down. Make it past this final resistance and your team will win the war and therefore also claim the territory in which the war took place with the company that declared war owning that territory. What you'll quickly notice is that in war, having a full spec and having a high level makes quite a difference. 
I wasn't able to find out in how far PvP scaling still applies to wars as well, but either way, if you have a massive amount of players with the high level perks from weapons and so on, then you will definitely feel that in a fight. On the upside, the rewards for wars are so good that even when you are sure to lose a war, it is still worth playing the war in many situations. Have a look at these two examples. In the first one, we were the attacking faction, we were able to capture two points, but not the third one. I got 7200 XP, which is massive, around 500 coin, which is quite a fair bit, and 1000 reputation as well as tokens for my faction, and 350 Azoth, which is used for fast travel and sometimes quite hard to come by. These here are the rewards for a level 60 war where we didn't even have a full team and got completely wiped, so basically this is what I got for just dying a few times and waiting a few minutes. As such, New World really encourages the participation in wars so that they get filled as often as possible, which I think is a very good thing. In my opinion, war as a whole is a great concept. I love that it's more than just 50v50 PvP with everyone running into each other, because I feel like that would have gotten relatively old relatively quickly. The problem that I have with it is that a lot of the features aren't really explained. It took us around four wars to really figure out how wars work, and even then people were still surprised by some of the information that I have in this video here, like for example the repair parts. There isn't really a good introduction to it in my opinion, when this mode would need a whole tutorial. There are 15 minutes before the battle starts that could be used to explain this through tooltips. Now of course they may want players to figure this out themselves and to explain others the strategy, which I think is nice in some ways, but in this particular case I'd rather have a bit more hand-holding for the players, because I think then wars as a whole would be better understood, played more strategically, and less people would be frustrated because they don't know what hit them. In the second war we really struggled to figure out why we were dying so much in what looked like equal fights, until we eventually learned that it was the cannons that were taking us out. I really love some of the systems they implement into the war, like the battle tokens and the repair parts, because they mean that even players that don't do that well can help out in other ways. You can have someone low level who just takes care of repairs, you can have someone who brings ammunition to other players and so on. I think it would be cool if you could hand battle tokens to other players to help them do certain tasks, but at the same time I could see some balance issues with that as well. Spec and armor wise, pretty much everyone was trying to go as heavy as possible on the armor while staying around the mid armor tier, along with high constitution builds, meaning they had a lot of health, so that they would survive as many shots as possible, especially from ranged attackers, which is quite important. High damage builds were not really that favored, because you just get taken out too easily by the ranged attacks from anyone sitting in the backline. This along with the AoE healing is something that may need some more attention in the future because as it stood, fights lasted very very long because it was very hard to even take a single person down in many situations, which often felt a little bit weird because you just had two opposing factions standing on a point hoping that eventually someone would fall down. I personally also think that the haste potion might need a little bit of a nerf because it's a little bit too easy to get into the enemy's backline at the start of the game and just kind of throw them off completely if they're not 100% prepared for your strategy. Communication wise I really hope that there will be a push to talk function for the raid leader specifically to talk to the entire raid because that would make communication much easier and no longer require external communication like discord. If they sort these things as well as the lag issues out, then I think Wars could be a fantastic mode that also implements a lot of fun strategy into it. If you want to give this video a little bit of a signal boost and you want to support me, feel free to subscribe, click the bell and maybe click the like button. That would really help me with making these videos. Also, let me know in the comments how you felt about War if you played it and if it's a mode you're interested in in general. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you for the next one soon. Duke Sloth, out.